Hello and welcome to the fifth lecture of Advanced Calculus course. Today we will learn about two important theorems in our discussion of convergence. The first is the convergence of increasing bounded sequences. Uh, this we will use this theorem throughout this course. It is a uh, <clears throat> powerful tool for proving many of important theorems in the field of real analysis. So let us articulate this a little bit more. What does this mean? This means that if a sequence AN is bounded, that is, it has a upper bound and a lower bound, and if it is an increasing sequence, like this, then the sequence a n, a sub n, converges to some real number. Uh, the theorem might look quite simple, but it is a really useful and powerful theorem that we will use many, many times throughout this course. So from now on, if we prove this theorem, you could consider any bounded and increasing sequence as converging sequence. So let's try to prove it. Now, uh, first consider the following set, A. A is a set of all terms in the sequence A sub n. So it is clear that A is a subset of all real numbers because each term in the sequence A sub n is a real number. and of course, it is not an empty set. And even better, since the sequence a sub n is bounded, the set of all terms in the sequence is also bounded. So, a is a non-empty subset of, real num uh, of the set of all reals, and it is bounded. So, what does this imply? This is the second axiom of our course, the completeness of R. We have a real number A, a certain real number A, that is a supremum, supremum of this set A. Now if we look at this information, the assumption in our theorem, the sequence A n is increasing and Still, it is bounded at some point. It is bounded above. So, a n will approach some number a that is less than this uh, upper bound. So we can know that this a, the supremum of a, is a very likely candidate for the number that our sequence a sub n will converge to. So now let's try to prove that. Um, since A is a supreme, supremum of set A, consider the following real number, A minus epsilon for some, for any epsilon, any positive epsilon. Um, since A is a supremum of set A, A minus epsilon could not be the upper bound of set A because A is the least, super, uh, least upper bound of Lar set large A, that is the definition of supremum, and A minus epsilon is clearly smaller than A, so since A is the least small, uh, since A is the least upper bound of set large A, A minus epsilon, which is smaller than A, cannot be a upper, uh, cannot be a upper bound of set, uh, set A. So what that means is that there exists a element of A, A, A sub large n, which is greater than A minus epsilon. Since this is not an upper bound, there must be an element of the set which is greater than that value. Now for any n greater than n, since a n is an increasing sequence, the following relationship will hold. a minus epsilon is uh, a 
sub large n is greater than a minus epsilon. And since, since this is an a, n, uh, a sub n is an increasing sequence, the a sub large n will be smaller than, uh, less than or equal to a sub, uh, a sub n. And since a is a supremum of the set uh, large a, this will be also less than or equal to a, the supremum. And of course, a is smaller than, less than, a plus epsilon. So what we have shown is that there exists a large, uh, there exists a uh, natural number, large n, that satisfies for all natural number greater than the number, the term, this, uh, the, the terms for such numbers will lie between a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon from a for any positive epsilon. So what that means is that a n converges to a. So this is our conclusion. So we have proven that a bounded and increasing sequence converges to its, uh, to its supremum of the set of all of his terms. Now then, um, uh, please try some exercises to apply the theorem. Well, an easy example would be the sequence 1 minus 1 over epsilon. So clearly this is a bounded sequence uh, and it is also clearly increasing sequence. So it will converge to a certain number which it, you would easily expect and try to try to check the, uh, try to prove that this sequence converges to a certain number and also please try to prove that the following sequence uh, the 1 over nth power of 1 plus 1 over n um, please try to prove that this sequence also converges to a certain number. So for this one, you would have to check that it is a bounded sequence and it is a increasing sequence. Um, this one, for to prove this one, you will need a binomial theorem. If you don't know what binomial theorem is, please check Wikipedia or other sources. And for bounded, you will... Um, you would easily prove that for any uh, for any natural number n, this the each term of the sequence will be less than or equal to three. Um, I'm not sure if this I'm not sure at this point, but maybe you could uh, you could use binomial theorem in the proof of this statement too. So try to check the following two examples. And now we will go on to the next theorem we are going to deal in this lecture. The next theorem we will deal with is the Bolsano Weierstrass. That's the German name. I'm not sure. I'm not one hundred percent sure about its pronunciation, but we are going to prove this theorem. The, th the theorem states that for a bounded sequence that is not necessarily increasing, it will have a subsequence which converges. So in the previous theorem, we, we proved that a bounded increasing sequence will always converge. But in the, in the bolsano weierstrass theorem, we are going to prove that any bounded sequence, uh, it doesn't have to converge by itself, but any bounded sequence will have a converging subsequence. This is the theorem we're going to prove now then how are you going to prove this? Uh, from the previous example, from the previous theorem, we know that 
a bounded increasing sequence always converges. So, to prove the theorem, what we have to prove is that a bounded sequence has a increasing or decreasing subsequence. Then the subsequence will be bounded because the original sequence was bounded. And since it's increasing or decreasing, it will converge. Uh, for the bounded decreasing, uh, for the convergence of bounded decreasing sequences, the proof is exactly the same as the proof for the bounded increasing case. And you could also use the uh, bounded increasing case theorem to just prove that a bounded decreasing sequence will also converge. So, the, so proving that a bounded sequence has an increasing or decreasing subsequence suffices. Now, how do we do this? Consider the following set large A. This is a set of subset of all natural numbers such that n is less than m. So for any natural number greater than the number, the terms of the sequence will also retain the same inequality. So A is a set that collects all of such numbers. So what this means is that it is a set of well set uh, uh well let's try to draw this. Let's say that um these are the terms of the sequences and the length of the bars I am drawing represents the value of that term. So let's say that, well, let's, let's look at A3. Um, let's say that the terms after A3 is always, has, has always a value greater than the value of uh, A sub 3. So it will continue like this, but it will be always greater than the value of A sub 3. Then, A3 would be the, well, 3. 3 would be the element of A, since for any number greater than 3, the following inequality, uh, the following statement holds. So, A is a set that collects all such numbers. And there are two cases. The first is when a, the first case is when A is an infinite set. And the second case is when it is a finite set. The proof of the theorem for this case it's fairly easy, so I'll leave this as an exercise. So I'll deal with the second case. L um, so let's say that A is a finite set, A defined as such as a finite set, then since A is a subset of all natural numbers and is f f finite, it, there exists a natural number large n such that a and the intersection of the set of all natural numbers after that number is an empty set. So since A is, uh, A is finite, it will have an upper bound. And if we take a natural number that is greater than that upper bound, then a such a statement will hold. So, since the intersection of the two sets are empty, let's just, let's say n sub 1 is this natural number. So, 
Well, we know that is since n1 is the element of this set, it would not be an element of A. And what this means is that there exists a natural number N2 such that it is greater than N1 but the terms do not retain such inequality because a uh, n1 n sub 1 is not an element of a it would not hold this statement correct so what that means is that there exists a natural number n2 such that it is still uh, it is greater than n1 but still the term the n tooth term n sub tooth term will not be greater than a sub n one term so what this means is that a sub n1 is greater than or equal to a sub n2. Now, since n2 is a natural number greater than n1, it is an element of this set. So again, n2 is not an element of A. And there exists n3 such that a n2 such that it is greater than n2, but still a n2 is greater than n3. So we could find an infinite sequence like this. So consider this sequence uh, nk. Then it, <clears throat> it will be an infinite sequence of natural numbers, but if we look at the sequence a and k, it is certainly a decreasing sequence. So in this case, a and k, a subsequence of a n, is a decreasing sequence. And so by the previous theorem, we know that this subsequence, a bounded decreasing sequence, converges to a certain number. So we have proven this case, case 2. So if you prove the first case, we have the proof for the Bolzano virus stress theorem. This is the end of the fifth, uh, fifth lecture of the advanced calculus course. In the next lecture, we will start our discussion of continuity.